Intern, good morning. Check this out. Look at them. Look at them. <laughs> Snoozy sleeping deer. And can you see the two ostriches in the background? Look at them. Oh, they've heard us. They've heard us. All right, they're waking up and moving and grooving now. Oh, my goodness. I think we've got a pregnant deer on our hands. Look at that. She is indeed pregnant. Aren't these little GPS markers just so useful? They can tell us so much about the different hormones and pheromones and different blood whatever levels that are going on inside animals like Lori. Oh my goodness, Lori is now pregnant. She has mated with Bob. She already has no siblings. She's got siblings, no, no young of her own. But that is so exciting because in turn, we are only two beavers away from being able to add in. Oh my gosh, look at the frog. I don't know why, but every time I see these bullfrogs, look at him, he's so awesome. He cracks me up so much. I love them. I love watching these little guys just hop around. Look at him. It's always that one particular frog. I want to name him something in particular, like some, some cool little name. What should I call you? It's a little boy. That's oh, a little girl. So I wonder what I should call her. She's just so cool. Uh, let me think. Let me think. Uh, I'm gonna name her. I'm gonna name her. Let's see. Hmm. Why is it always so hard to name things in turn? It's so embarrassing. I need. I, you're just Amber. You're Amber the frog. There we go. There we go. And that's because I have a lucky piece of amber I keep in my pocket. Like a little teeny fly in it. I don't know why, but it's my lucky fly. And there we go. So now I'll see Amber jumping around. Hopefully she won't get herself nommed up. <gasps> Carol the second is now pregnant. Oh my gosh. Who's her mate? Morgan the second. Oh my gosh. We are going to have the, the requisite number of beavers any second now. We've got to get to work. We've got to get to work in turn. Okay. Okay. We've got we've to move it and groove it. What are we doing? All right, let's clear this area out of the invasive bamboo and other random plants. Good, good, good. Let's make sure it is the appropriate biome type that we're looking for. Some temperate grassland biome going on in here. And uh, there we go. Uh, there we go. All right, temperate grassland. Uh, no, we want the temperate forest. Let's see, temperate grassland, fern prairie. Pacific, uh, open woodland. Open woodland? Is that actually what we're going for? No, I'm pretty sure we're going for... Alright, let's look up exactly... Let's see, not temperate grassland, I'm pretty sure. No, we're going for... Pretty sure the wolves that we are going to be adding in would be temperate rainforest, or temperate uh, forest forest. Let me check. Whoops, whoops. No, that would be black bear. Black bears would be really cool to work with too, but they are not... What we're working with this time, would it be open woodland? Let's check. Hmm. That's a no-go too. There are lots of cool animals to work with. I can't wait for our next assignment in turn. Oh, who knows what it'll be. It'll be very exciting. All right, let's see. Lowlands area, Barusa. We're looking for the wolves. And actually, I think that they would be under endangered. So let's check endangered. And then we're looking specifically, oh, the European wildcat would be so much fun. And the Bengal tiger. Can you imagine getting to work with those? There's so many possibilities for what we'll work with after here, including the otter. I would love to introduce a wetlands otter area. We clearly have managed wetlands successfully. Or the hammerheads. Oh, going out to the sea. That would be so cool. Hmm. Maybe not under endangered. Oh, why does this always have to be so complicated, intern? All right, let's see. Let's see. Hang on. Hang on. We'll find him. We'll find him. Let's go with vulnerable, perhaps? Ah, why can we never keep the stars? We need to get our ratings on, on Twitter and to Facebook and all those things, a little higher, TripAdvisor and all that nonsense. All right, there's some amazing animals in here, but no information about the wolf that we are seeking. <gasps> Can you imagine how cool it would be to work with a platypus? I have not yet worked with platypi, so actually that would be fantastic. Let's see, what about, what about, um, hmm. And critically endangered? Do, 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 do. No, though it brings up another host of really amazing animals that some of whom we have worked with in our endangered zoo, and some of whom we haven't worked with yet. I must just be blind in turn. I must just be blind. Oh, these catalogs. All right, one second in turn. Let's try it like this. Let's see, those are some cranes. Ah, there we go. 
The Eastern Timberwolf. About time. Jeez, took me forever. About time. Good. Now, they're considered low risk in some areas. I don't know. I would debate that, but let's see what they need. So we're talking about a boreal forest biome. So let's whip up something appropriate for them. They could also be found in this biome. In fact, there was actually a very interesting article out today, in turn, about how the timber wolf, the eastern, or not the eastern timber wolf, yeah. Well, one of the timber wolves has managed to find their way into Arizona. And that just happened. They're keeping an eye on her. It's a female. And she's normally from the Rocky Mountain, kind of Yellowstone area, but she's managed to wiggle her way down to Arizona. And they're not really sure what she's doing just yet. They think that she's just looking for a mate. So they're kind of keeping an eye on her. All right, and we're gonna mix this up a little bit with the temperate forest dirt. In fact, I think we'll switch this to temperate forest dirt just because it seems to match our area a bit better. There we go. Yeah, we'll switch it up. We can do that, don't worry. They're very adaptable, actually. And wolves used to span a huge part of the United States. They have a very limited range now. And one of the problems is that they can get, like, protected land, but they're kind of hardwired to move outside of that protected land when there's too many wolves in the area. So if you have a wolf population doing really great in one zone, then they'll start to be more wolves. And when there's more wolves, they're hardwired to go, okay, there's enough wolves here, I need to find my own room and my own mate, and so they'll try to go to a different area. And that's where the problems start up in turn, because then they go outside of the protected area and they aren't around much longer after that. Oh my gosh, some of these trees are so amazing. Some of these little, look at these, look at these cute little trees. Totally awesome. Ooh, how I would, oh my gosh, I would love to add giant sequoias, even though I don't think that that's more what we're going here. Oh, she just died of old age. Rat. But we're, we're getting there on the beavers. All right, let's add in a few of these firs. Kind of thicker fir trees. Man, just think of how excited so many of our guests will be once we're able to add in a wolf. Oh, I think that's going to be very exciting. We'll make this a little bit thicker with the fir trees. Some people are still scared. You know, the big bad wolf mythology has a pretty strong impact on the public mind. So hopefully... Oh, and Otis just died of old age. No wonder our beavers are, are having so many babies. We've got to replace the ones we're losing. But the big bad wolf does still have kind of that hold on the public mind. And it's kind of difficult because you can't, you can't dismiss the fact that these animals are indeed carnivores. They're predators. They're apex predators in their zones. So you can't dismiss the fact that they're dangerous. But that doesn't mean that they're bad. Just because something's dangerous doesn't always mean that it's bad. I mean, look at electricity! Would you really want to handle that stuff for all? Nope, you'd get zapped. But it doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Oh, the turkeys are having babies! Isn't it so funny, the little, like, updates we get on our, on our little phones? It's like, oh my, well, the turkey's pregnant. It leads to some fantastically hilarious dinner conversation with the other zookeepers. In fact, you need to come out to dinner with us sometime in turn. You've been so shy! Alright, now let's see what else we can add in here. Uh, let's try some trembling aspen trees. Good, good. I like the look of it. I like the look of it, intern. Then we might try to make some nice denning areas for these guys. I'm gonna have to learn a little bit more about wolf dens. We want to leave some open areas for them to be able to run through as well. There we go. There we go. That's looking pretty nice. Let's see. Any other type of trees I want to add in? Maybe a couple more maples. A couple more maples. Eh, maybe not right there. There we go. Good. There we go. All right. Let's actually add in a few more trees along the back here because I want them to feel like they've got a protected little zone. <gasps> There's an alligator snapping turtle pregnant here in the zoo or the park. Hang on a second. When did you show up here, Missy, eh? Looks like that male attracted himself a female, and now we've got multiple alligator snapping turtles. Oh, that's going to make the guests so happy. For some reason, these guys are so popular among the guests. Possibly because the alligator snapping turtles do have kind of a, a bit of an older dinosaur-esque look to them. And that's very appealing to some of our guests. So that's fine. As long as the guests get excited and happy about the animals, then I am excited and happy too. Let's go ahead, triple aspen. 
Fur? Eh, that should be good actually. So let me add in like one more birch tree. Carol the second is going to give birth. Oh my gosh, if she gives birth to twins, then that means we will have met the requirements in beaver births. And that we can- Oh my goodness, and look at the whole little family! And look at the little crowd in here! Everyone all hanging out in the lodge. I am never gonna grow tired of this. And Lori is giving birth at the same time! We're gonna meet the, the requirement any second now! This is so exciting! Oh my goodness! Okay, Lori is giving birth and Carol the second is giving birth. Okay, there goes Carol. Let's follow her. I think she's gonna give birth first. Okay, and there we go. There we go. Alright. All right, follow Carol, follow that beaver. Follow that beaver, where'd she go? Is that her? No, that's Bob. Oh, I think that's her. Right here. They seem to really prefer coming up in these cattails to give birth. <gasps> I think it's her, I think it's her, I think it's her, I think it's her. Oh my goodness, look, it's another beaver. Is it just one beaver or two beavers? One beaver or two beavers, Carol. Carol, is it one beaver or two beavers? It's one beaver, we're one beaver closer. Oh, that's so exciting. It's another little female. And we already have Carol the second. So we're gonna have to just hang on a minute here. Okay, Mallard, Mallard, Mallard. Carol is giving birth. Where's Lori? Lori is gonna give birth. Oh, 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 oh. <gasps> She's giving birth! Oh my gosh, did she give birth? She gave birth to twins! This is it! This is an intern! This is the requisite number of beavers! We are there! We are there! Oh, I will contact the BLB. They will be so excited. And all we have to do now is finish up the wolf exhibit. Oh, this is so exciting. All right. Finish up the wolf exhibit. And then I think we'll have to finish up kind of this area for the guests to enjoy, be entertained by. And then we can add the wolves in. Oh, this will be wonderful. All right. All right. Well, I'm going to make a quick call to the BLB. And then we will continue to deck out the wolf area. So just one second in her. Hold on to your leech-filled pants, and then we will get ready to finish up this area to prepare it for the wolves, and hopefully finish preparing that part of the zoo for the guests, add the wolves in, and then sit back and bask in a completed, absolutely amazing park. Whew! I was right, intern. The BLB is exceptionally happy and excited, and they cannot wait to be able to add in the next amazing addition to this park. However, we do need to make sure, oh, and the catfish are sick. Let's dive in, take care of the catfish. We do need to make sure that we get the exhibit prepared for the new amazing addition, the awesome wolves that we're gonna be adding in. Where are our ferns? There are ferns. So we just need to finish preparing the exhibit and then we also need to prepare this side of the zoo for the guest. And then we will be allowed to add in the wolves and to see how they adjust to the absolutely amazing habitat that hopefully we can provide to them. So that means we gotta make it absolutely amazing first. So let's put down a bunch of these and the foxes are growing. That's wonderful. We should be able to release some of them into the wild soon. Which is what we're hoping for. Keeping Todd was a bit of a gamble. There was quite a lot of politics that went into keeping the fox so we had originally said we would honor by leaving in the wild and then we ended up keeping him because we wanted him to help raise his his pups and i think that was the better move i think that because uh dixie had been raised by human hands it would have been a little bit too stressful on her to leave the raising of the pups entirely in her hands she wouldn't i don't think she would have been able to teach them how to be proper foxes is what i'm saying all right so let's go ahead get Tons of ferns in here. Put a bunch of ferns in here. Uh oh, the catfish is sick. No. Why? Hang on, little catfish. Hang on, I'm coming. There we go. Give the catfish some medicine. Never thought you'd be forcing open the catfish mouth and throwing the medicine drops down in it, did you, in turn? You gotta love how life provides you the variety here. Alright, now we've got some bilberries. Good. Gotta spread the bilberries around. Mix them in a little bit with the ferns. There we go. Good. Oh, and Carol the third is now pregnant. The beaver population, I think, is now self-sustaining. We have had enough new beavers come in. We have some of the other males and females wander off to start families of their own. And it's just, it's a beautiful thing to see. I love that this ecosystem has become so healthy. It only needed a little bit of help, too. Well, a lot of help. We put in a lot of work here. All right, let's add in some more stuff over here. More bilberries over here. I think that's almost good. Let's 
some more of the lady ferns in a few spots. Mostly to provide that sense of cover that the animals really enjoy, especially a predatory animal. The wolves are so amazing because they hunt in packs though. The way that they will coordinate with one another to take down big prey items. And that takes a lot of practice. I think that's what a lot of people forget, is that you do see a lot of wolves who just are not successful as a group for a long time, because it, it takes so much practice to get used to each other's signals, to learn what those signals mean, to learn who to obey, because it's probably very exciting when you're super hungry and on the trail of food. There we go. All right, now let's see what the lovely wolves would need to have specifically in their area. Mr. Timber Wolf, there we go. Let's see, let's add in some bones for them to chew on. Some little bone piles, like discarded carcasses. I'm sure that they would stumble on them. Basically, if you have bones discarded in the woods, somebody is gonna chew on them. Even the squirrels will chew on the bones, or like fallen antlers from deer. They're very, shed, shed antlers, they're very common for anything and everything with teeth to be able to chew on. All the small mammals love chewing on them, using them as a source of, of calcium that's kind of hard to come by. So you may think it's weird, but a squirrel will run up and will chew on a deer antler. Not one that was attached to the deer, you would hope, but one that has fallen off the deer that's a shed antler. And it's an important part of the ecosystem. So that is what they feed on. All right, we'll tuck in. Here we go. Tuck in a little like, carcass right here. Tuck in another carcass over here. We'll have to hopefully get the wolves some form of exercise too. Hmm. Hmm, speaking of some form of exercise. Ooh, look at this rock formation. Nice. Yeah, let's add in this rock formation. Why not? Beautiful. Absolutely lovely. Maybe put a couple of them side by side. Like a little, a little creek formation. There we go. There we go. And what else can we add in to help our wolves feel at home and comfortable? Uh, we'll throw in, I know it seems weird, but we'll throw in a couple car tires for them to play with. You have to have that enrichment, especially for captive animals. Ooh, and we'll put this post with the rope and the ice over here, kind of where the guests might see them interact with that. And then we'll throw in an unlucky bullfrog or two for them to chase. Oh, and the white deer is about to give birth. Let's go watch real fast. All right, let's, let's see what's going on over here with the white deer. How exciting! The white deer is gonna give birth. Where is the white deer? Oh, is she over here? Oh, look at all of them. They're really keeping very close in their little herd structure. Oh, and white deer three is gonna give birth too. Are they both giving birth at the exact same time? Yep, she's giving birth. And she's giving birth. Wow! There's gonna be baby fawns. Oh my goodness, so many baby fawns. She's coming through, coming through the ferns. Maybe looking for a nice quiet spot. Okay, gotta be really quiet in turn. Gotta be very quiet, we can't alarm her. We wanna witness this miracle of life. Well, then we have to go nice and slow. Hello, bats. We'll hide in the bat cave. She'll never suspect us here. My goodness, she has taken a while to find a spot. Okay, she's still moving. Oh, 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 I think she's settling in. She's getting comfortable. Ah, bats! It's okay, don't panic, don't panic. They won't get in our hair. <gasps> Look at the baby fawn! Oh my gosh, intern, that's so wonderful! Oh my goodness, and look, look, look! I think the other deer is coming over here to give birth too. Hi, little one, welcome to the park! Yep, she's settling down in the ferns. All right, let's come over. We can watch what's going on. Did she give birth? Did she give birth? That's a baby turkey. I hope she did not just give birth to a baby turkey. I would be, there it is. I would be so confused, but you're just hiding right over here. What a good mama. She gave birth to you right down. Oh, look, you can just barely see the baby. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay, okay. I'm backing up. I thought I heard some stomping of some hooves, but she gave birth to her baby hidden here in the foliage, which is a very smart move. And look at all the bats. We should add a bat cave over over by where the wolves are. I think that would be a good idea. It would definitely add to the area. And they're not gonna mess with the bats. So let's add a bat cave over here because that would be that would be a good addition. There we go. 
we'll put in some nice big rocks. It'll be something more for the wolves to be able to investigate, sniff at, keep their curiosity peaked, keep them engaged. That's what you want. Let's see. Yeah, just use these rocks. Here we go. Big rock. Big rock. Ooh, bigger rock. Big, 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 big rock. Big, big, big. Here we go. All right, so that should that should definitely do it. Those are a bit bigger than I was planning on, but sometimes you just gotta roll with it. Let's see, a little rock. There, a couple little rocks. There we go, now we've got a bat cave over here that the wolves can sniff at and realize, okay, nope, don't wanna go in there, don't wanna go in there. So there we go in turn, all right. So we'll have to continue working on preparing the exhibit for the wolves and then make sure that we prepare this side of the park for the guest and then we will have a fully functional wonderful park this is really great this is absolutely fantastic there's a few things we need to tidy up and then we can sit back and bask in the amazing amazing beautiful thing we've built so there's a few more detailed things to fill in before we have to fin finish the pathway basically before they will send us the wolves but we'll do that and then we will be able to celebrate with the new wolves i'm so excited i'll see you bright and early in the morning in turn ah oh, just a little bit more work this is the final push we can do it we can do this